Thank you so much. Okay, and um, how are the market players reading the IMF end of mission statement? Of course, we'll have to hear from Omotala Abimbola, investment analyst at Chapel Hill Durham now. Good morning, Omotala. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Thank you very much, Emilio. So the IMF's end of mission statement is certainly an interesting one. It discussed everything from economic growth to inflation to exchange rate structure to financial system stability. Out of all of these, which do you think has the most important implications for markets, both equity and debt? Uh, th thanks for the interesting question, Jimmy. Uh, thank you once again for having me. Um, so I think for markets, uh, markets will definitely be very, uh, be, be very, very encouraged uh, by the positive comments that the IMF had on the economic activities and the half of the economy. Uh, so as we all know, the, the COVID-19 induced recession that we had last year was very short-lived, uh, and we had a, a, a very mild rebound in Q4 2020. Which was further consolidated, you know, home in, in Q1 2021. Uh, and I think, based on the outlook of the high MF, uh, they do expect that the recovery will gain even further momentum uh, going forward, uh, with the very, very high GDP growth target for 2021 uh, of 2.5%, which is perhaps the highest in the market. On the optimistic side, it does appear as if they have been very, very optimistic that the Nigeria's uh, very short term. Uh, economy, economic capital, at least better than you know what the uh, market is expecting, uh, and I think that is very really positive for the FC market uh, in this regard, uh, because at the moment Nigerian FC market has an extremely cheap valuation. Uh, on the price to earnings basis, the the, the all share index is trading at at this point two times, which is very very cheap uh, compared to what you have uh, in emerging markets and concern markets. Also, the dividend yield of the market, which is now above five percent, is nearly two times where you have, you know, across peer countries in emerging markets and concerned countries. So, in this regard, that's very positive. Uh, and now, as we move on in the economic side, uh, the expectation is that you know, uh, corporate earnings will even further return as we are seeing an improvement in the economy. Uh, beyond the economic activities, there have also been some remarks uh, regarding uh, domestic prices. Uh, as we know, uh, over the past months, we have seen the head and inflation of, uh, from, from near record level uh, that, that is was uh, in, in March. And the IMS view is that we're going to be consistent uh, disinflationary pattern over the next term. Uh, and they are expecting that you know, head and inflation will touch uh, 15.5% by year end, which is you know, a very significant moderation compared to percent level that we have at the moment. So that's a positive thing, particularly for the debt market, uh, where we have seen uh, interest rate level, uh, you know, strong aggressive beginning of this year. Uh, but our view is that it's going to get uh, worse before it gets better, uh, because when you look at the current level of fixed income yields, uh, across the bond yield for, for instance, we are seeing, you know, by uh, yields at an average of close to 13 percent. So that's still, you know, very, very much more, you know, uh, lower compared to the current level of, of inflation rate, and even the expected level of inflation rate over the next ten. So our view is that, you know, uh, interest rate environments uh, move up uh, slightly higher at cost before we start seeing a, a much more significant and sustainable uh, decline uh, in the interest rate environment. Uh, but perhaps lastly, you know, one other key. Uh, outcome for the market is the exchange rate development uh, because, as we all know, one of the key reasons why we are seeing uh, equity valuations uh, this many in Nigeria at the moment is that uh, foreign portfolio investors they are unable to access the domestic market uh, largely because of the lack of liquidity in the foreign exchange market and also the very quiet foreign market. So, uh, markets should definitely be looking forward to having. Uh, a much more uh, liquid uh, and much more flexible foreign exchange market before we start seeing a strong people uh, in, in, in special sentiments. All right, so still looking at this uh, exchange rate uh, market, the IMF once again had some important comments to make, particularly on a convergence of the multiple exchange rate structure. Uh, does this uh, align, align with your, your view? 
it, it does align with our view and in fact the view of the market uh, because uh, at the moment what we have is the fragmented point exchange market uh, the CPN has acted in good faith uh, actually trying to uh, convert some of the multiple you know exchanges that we have and very recently the CPN actually discard its uh, its previous official rates and and then adopting the investors and exporters effects be the de facto you know official exchanges in the country that's a very very good step and very very important for investor sentiment uh of course that's only the beginning of the reforms but we still need to see a lot more before we can have uh, much more certainty in the point exchange market and chief among the things that the market should be looking forward to uh, is an improvement in liquidity in the coin exchange market and the clearing of the massive FX backlog that have powered up over the past over the past one year. Uh, so at the moment, if you look at the hand in window, it's now trading you know less than a hundred million dollars per day on the average. You know compared to over two hundred million million dollars per day that is trading before we had the COVID nineteen crisis. So definitely we need you know more liquidity. Behind you window, and that can only happen when we have more flexibility in the pricing of the currency by the central bank. Uh, you know, another thing that we need to see is the claim of the FS backlog. Uh, current estimate of the backlog is between seven to ten billion dollars, you know, and that includes you know uh, demand for FX by manufacturers as well as demand for FX, you know, by foreign possible investors want to purchase their capital, and even demand for FX by domestic corporate. Who wants to make uh, you know capital repatriation to their parents' companies? This massive FX backlog, you know, is like a cloud and the hanging over you know the FX market, and that has to be supported by the central bank before we have you know uh, much more liquidity you know in the foreign exchange market. And also we need to see more flexibility, and that's very 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 key to the market in the pricing of the currency. So right now, if you look at the the parallel market, for instance. But I think the FX rate they being very close to the dollar. Now the parallel market is not a very large extent. It's not the appropriate parameter for any economy because it's very subject subject speculative activities and it's not as but the situation where you have a lot of restrictions in your official FX market and you don't have uh, enough interest to satisfy demand, they're going to chase lots of legitimate demand for FX in the parallel market. So we need to see the central bank actually align the FX rate in the official windows, actually, you know, move towards a much more realistic figure that we can have, you know, much more autonomous inflow of FX into the market, that we assist trying the backlog of demand and also uh, in a way uh, you know, help to ease FX basic funds that is based on manufacturers and businesses in the country. That, that is very, very important and very central. What happens, you know, in the economy at a very short medium term, and I think beyond all of these things that we're even talking about, uh, one of the key things that you know, uh, point investors should be looking forward uh, is for us to have a, a very, very transparent, uh, a very transparent and 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 um, rule based FX market, which is not susceptible to frequent liquidity challenges. So over the past, uh, over the past six, seven, six years now. We have had two episodes of active FX basic crunches in the economy. And that has, that has happened, you know, uh, way too many times. Beyond all the net term fixes that we need to do in the FX market, we also need to develop a much more transparent and rule-based FX management framework uh, that will be respected by everybody and that will serve, you know, as a, as a barometer, you know, for, for what investors will expect, you know, uh, you know, uh, in the in the in the point exchange market, regarding the economic cycle that we are in. Well, in your words, Abimbola, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Thank you very much for your time this morning. We do appreciate it. Indeed.